Stay tuned. This video contains a Norberg and Linden giveaway. Hi, it's Dia. It's been a minute and I'm happy to be back with these Norberg and Linden colored pencils that they were nice enough to send me. This set of 72 pencils comes with a practice pad, a pretty decent vinyl eraser, a nice metal sharpener, and this set of 72 really nice wax-based color pencils. There are three trays in a magnetically closed box and I'm going to be coloring this image, I can't even believe it's almost that time, from Everyday Magic. And I mean that time meaning here comes fall already and Halloween. So I'm just going to basically start reviewing like I always do. And I'm going to try the pencils. The first one that I used is white. Now I'm going to make this lantern glow. So I'm kind of a stickler about white pencils and about black pencils. First blush, these pencils are about as smooth as they come. Now I can't really tell, and you can't really tell what it looks like and how it lays down because it's white. So let's fast forward a little. Happily, all of the pencils are numbered and they're also named. There's also a color chart on the back of the box that shows all of the colors with the numbers, but the names are not on that color chart. I made up my own little tiny color chart and I, I put the numbers, I'm sorry, not the numbers, I put the colors in categories yellows together, greens together, blue together, so you could see how they decided to divide up the colors, meaning how many yellows, how many oranges, how many reds, and here you go. And I will talk about that a little bit later. Here's the first purple I used. Purples, in my opinion, have the tendency, even in regular crayons, like cheapy Crayola crayons, they have a tendency to be the smoothest. I don't know if that's the pigment. It has to be the pigment because it's universal. Even writing pens, the purple ink is so smooth and it just feels so good to use it. And it's no different in this set. I don't know the light fastness of these pencils. I couldn't find them on the web. Well, I found the pencils on the web. I just couldn't find any information about the light fastness rating of the pencils. So I'm not gonna assume anything in either direction. And um, so I can't say that they're gonna be perfect for professional art that needs to have a long life. So I jumped over to lemon yellow and then I went to a darker yellow. There are three yellows in the set and they're actually really nice. One is sort of like a light soft chiffon yellow and um, so, so far so good. They're very creamy, they're very soft, they're very smooth. They come with a decent point and the leads are four millimeters, which is a nice substantial size. So even though the lead is relatively soft, I would probably compare them, mm, I was gonna say, I was gonna say kind of like Arteza, but I think that they're closer to bronzeal pencils. They're that very smooth, creamy, um, buttery feeling pencil. I really like them. Whoops, I kind of went off the edge here. Now, I don't know if this happens to you, but when I get a new set of pencils, I'm a little tentative because I guess I'm just getting to know them. I'm not used to the feel, I'm not used to how they blend, and I'm not used to the colors. So 
it's kind of a guessing game at first and I don't know if I would make the exact same decisions if I went back and did the same image again because after a while you get used to the colors. And I do believe after a while, if you stick with the same set, I think you become familiar with it and I think you can improve your drawing or coloring or just your art in general. Whoop, now here I got to use the eraser and it's actually pretty good as you can see. I thought I would make the wallpaper sort of look like an antique, um, real soft, muted, um, I guess like a wine color background, and then uh, have the detail kind of a, a muted sort of sandstone color. And it just, it sort of started to compete with the lantern. So. I erased it, and as you can see, that eraser works pretty good. Now, I wanted to tell you also, I didn't know how much these pencils cost. Well, that was me speaking to someone, sorry about that. I didn't know how much these pencils cost when I started to use them, and I think that's actually good because I didn't know if they were $500 pencils or $10 pencils. Let me explain. If I, if I think that they're great pencils and they cost a lot of money, I think I might have a preconceived notion of what they're supposed to do. Now, I don't know if that would affect me in a good way or a bad way. Uh, make, make me think that they're gonna be wonderful and I should, or I should expect something and they are, they're not up to par. But this way, it's just a blank slate and I can just judge from how they feel and how they look. Now, when I do images, I try to do the whole image for a review. It takes, a, as you know, anybody who uses colored pencils, colored pencil is a super slow medium. It takes a really long time. So I decided I was only gonna do half of this page because first of all, there's a lot of detail. And second of all, I don't want this video to be four hours long for you to get a review of these pencils. Um, oh. Another thing about these pencils, they came sharpened to an adequate point. I didn't have to sharpen the whole set before I used them, although they were sharpened in a, 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 a more typical way. So I, once I started to sharpen them, after I started to wear them down a little bit, I actually liked them better. Here, I'm just using as many colors as I possibly can. I used one of the blues and I'm using all the yellows and the oranges to make the flame a little bit dimensional and maybe a little bit unusual, and just to see what these colors feel like. Another thing about this set is that there is continuity in the feel. They don't vary. I've used sets before where some of them seem less pigmented or more pigmented. This was really even right across the board. The white that I used at first, oh, by the way, I, I do that some, sometimes and I'll do it with the ghosts also. I put white down to soften up the area. So if I do go over it with a color, it's, it's much softer looking and the results end up very different. Now, I wish I would have left that little white spot in the middle, but say la vie. Here's a color chart. As you can see, there's only three yellows, a decent amount of reds and oranges. There were tons of greens and tons of blue. 13 blue, uh, 12 green, and um, I think I would have liked one or two more yellows and a couple of more of a variety of browns and grays. There was only three grays and one of them is Payne's gray and that did have a little bit, in my opinion, of a teal undertone. A, a gorgeous color, um, but I would have liked to see more gray. And I'm speak, talking about gray because of this little mouse. So there's a gray and then there's a cool gray, which is a bit darker and more intense, which I also use here. And the, the black, it's a decent black, but it's not one of the blackest blacks that I've ever used. And I have a thing about 
um, black pencils. They all feel wonderful. They all cover really well. Um, I would say the black is more of a, of like the deepest deep charcoal. It, and it does actually cover really well. So you can build on it. So for the background, I ended up using a mauve color for the background and for the details. I used one of the plummy purple colors and I have to say they worked really well. They didn't break and I can push pretty hard at, at certain times. I was kind of being a little tentative here because I had just sharpened the point and I was trying to get a get an idea of what it looked like when I pushed very hard. When I didn't push very hard, I didn't have any breakage, nothing cracked and uh, there was no split wood. So. I would definitely give it a thumbs up there. The, there was a really nice variety of purples also. Everything from a fuchsia to a lavender. There was a good amount of purples. I would say probably nine or, nine or 10. So you're not gonna miss out there. Oh, and also there was a lot of really nice pinks, which a lot of sets are really not good at supplying. This definitely gets a thumbs up. So right here, I decided I would see how these blend use, using terpenoid. Terpenoid is basically mineral spirits. You can get it online at Amazon and at any art store. So these colors blended amazingly well. It almost turned into like a watercolor looking background after I completed it. I'm not going to show you the whole thing because it's a big area, but you get the idea. So right after I show you how I do these ghosts, I'm going to tell you about the giveaway. So this is what I was talking about before. I cover the ghost in white. Now, I think that in general, people think of ghosts as white, but I'm not gonna leave them completely white. Now, you just saw me use that plummy purple, and since the ghost would be transparent, you could probably see some of the background through the ghost. So, I'm sort of giving indications of the purple through his little body and I'm using two different colors. That's the mauve color. I'm going over the white very, very lightly and the white helps to dilute it. And now the problem with ghosts is that you can see the white lines, but I'll fix that also later. I used, I think a Posca pen, and a Signo. I just wanted to, see, I, I used a couple things to see which one actually worked better. And, uh, oh, and everything that I mentioned, as usual, will, will be listed underneath the video, and you'll be able to click the link instantly if you want to buy any of it. Um, also, uh, I still had no idea what these pencils cost. And right about here, I started to really like them. I started to get used to the feel. Uh, I got used to the colors a little bit more because I had used more of them. And uh, I had colored more of an area. So I was getting the feel. So now I went over the top of the mauve with the white again. And then I blended it all in with terpenoid and that paintbrush. So you can see it looks different than the background, but you can still see that there's a hint of color there. So back to the review. I'm just gonna be blending for a little while here, so I'll leave a little bit of it in. So 
I think that the white pencil is actually relatively decent. Um, I think the best white pencil out there is probably Luminance or, or Prismacolor. I like them both. They feel differently. Prismacolor is very soft and creamy. Luminance has almost a chalky feel to it. It's also very pigmented, really, really nice. So you can see this background is blending really nice with the Terpenoid. I'm getting into more details here with that same plummy purple. And since I have a whole lot going on at this point, I can safely say that these pencils, even though they're wax, allowed me to use lots and lots of layers. I'm not somebody who goes over one area one time and then I'm done. I go back and forth and use different colors and change my mind. So I'm a good person to be the judge of layers. Now, here's another thing that I did. I, I, I like antique glass. I like mercury glass. I like um, certain colors also from different eras. There's a, a green that I love, and I would probably call it like an absinthe green. And lo and behold, I was able to create that kind of look on this lamp with this set. I also learned a new word. And I'll tell you what it is right after I tell you about the giveaway. So I am going to give, thanks to Norberg and Linden, one of these sets to you lovely viewers as an appreciation for watching my videos and all your lovely comments. So please, after this video, feel free to leave me a comment and tell me if you want to enter. You do, the, the only stipulation is that you have to either follow me here or on Facebook and leave me a comment or like. So that's it. It's an easy peasy giveaway and it's just because you're all wonderful. So yeah, follow me, like me, comment, and you're in. Um, I'm gonna let this go for two weeks so a lot of people can see it. And if you want, feel free to share it. And if you do share it, here's another thing I'll, I'll add. If you do share it anywhere, I don't care if you share it on Facebook or Twitter, whatever, I'll throw in another entry, but you have to tell me in the comments below. Okay, so you can see the colors. Oh, and I, I wanted to make the other parts that are not green on, on that lamp gold, so I didn't know if this set was going to be able to do that because it didn't have a whole lot of what I would call natural colors. It had a lot of like color colors. Um, and surprisingly, everything that I wanted it to do, even with the minimum amount of grays, I was able to do it, including make the brass look like it has brass components and make the bottom look like absinthe colored mercury glass. Oh, and here's the word I learned today. One of the greens is named Bezik. I had never heard that word before, and I love to collect words, especially strange ones or underutilized ones. Bezik is a 19th century card game that's for two players that involves some trickery. So I thought that was really cool on their part to have one of the greens named Bezik. Another one of them that I used was Seafoam, and we're, we're pretty much all familiar with the Seafoam, but I am basically in love with the greens in this set. I'm totally impressed. I think they're gorgeous. They feel really nice. And the fact that I could make this lamp 
look the color that I that I wanted. It it was my own little interior challenge, and it and it worked out, and I love it. I didn't I did I don't make these images perfect because I just I I need to get them done, and I want you to be able to see them in a timely fashion. But I want them to be nice enough so it looks like a nice enough picture, and. Uh, yeah, this set allowed me to do that. I really enjoyed using them, meaning all of the colors. I love the fact that there was a pad in there. Actually, the paper in the pad is, is very nice. And there's about, I don't know, eight to 10 mandalas. Is it mandala? Mandala? Mandalas in there. So you can have fun doing that also. So, you know what? I know it's a little premature, but yes, I definitely give this set a thumbs up. It's 72 pencils with the sharpener, the eraser, and the pad in that nice and magnetically um, closed bo box. And... Uh, and then I found out that there it's only twenty five dollars for 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 the whole set. So yeah, this is a super. I was gonna say introductory set, but if you, you know, like I said before, if you're not doing this professionally, and you don't need it to last forever, I would say this. I would recommend this to anybody who likes to color, who likes to draw, who wants to sketch. Great set. Um, somebody told me about this set on YouTube, and I always appreciate all the comments because I learn things like this. I had been reviewing another set, and somebody, I wish I could remember who, and I wish I could remember what video it was, said that they were in love with their Norberg and Linden set. So I could not wait to try this out for myself. I just wanted to leave this in the video because I don't know instantly what I'm going to choose for colors. I don't know what's gonna go with what. So here I am trying certain colors. One of them was Spice. One of them was, I think it was called Moccasins. Very cute names. And I didn't know which I liked better. So I rather than try it on the page, sometimes I take another page, put it on top and put it next to the area that I'll be coloring. And this is how I decided that I think blue would look really nice here. So yeah, I've said this before too. Always give yourself a break. If you, ha if you don't know how to color what you're coloring, look it up. It's not cheating. This is how everybody learns, every single person. We look at other things, we we use reference photos, we figure out how to make shadows, and then after a while it becomes muscle memory. So don't think that you're gonna be able to do it the first time and get it perfect. Now here I goofed. I thought it would, I thought I would take that yellow and add some highlights like I added um, on the mouse and on the lamp and on the little jar to the left, which I won't be coloring today. But where, wherever the lantern would shine some light, <sighs> I thought maybe some of the some of that little uh, tablecloth area might not reflect the light necessarily, but maybe catch some of the light. So since I used a blue, it sort of ended up looking like stars in the sky. And I'm not gonna leave the whole thing because it's just me coloring that whole area, but eventually I just color the yellow. Oh, and stay, stay tuned here because I'm gonna show how you can make that little area kind of look like it was knitted. I don't know if it's knitted or knit. It's probably knit, but that's okay. So, so what I did was sharpen the pencil and all I'm doing is making these little ovals sort of pointing toward each other so those look like stitches and then 
next to it, I sort of fill in the area because that area would be a little bit in the shadow. And then I make another row of those little ovals pointing towards one another and then fill it in next to it and then just keep on going. And then when it's done, you'll see it looks a little silly right now. It, it actually looks like it was crocheted or it was knit. Um, so that's kind of a fun little trick. Oh, and I also colored in the tassels on the right. Nothing, nothing fancy at all. That was my sharpener, my electric antique Panasonic Point-O-Matic. I'll also put that underneath. They're hard to find. I usually find them on eBay. Expensive, totally worth it. Okay, and here it basically is. And as you notice, it doesn't have to be neat because it want, it, you want it to look fuzzy anyway. So it's fine. So it's a slightly lighter blue as a base. And then you go over it with a darker, more intense blue. And it uh, doesn't have to be perfect. Just to, I, I wanted there to be some texture. So now it looks like a placemat that was maybe an antique, maybe your grandma knit it, knitted it. <laughs> um, so yeah, and that's really easy to do. So I'm going over every single thing on the whole picture with the turpenoid because it ended up to be so smooth and so nice and these pencils were a dream to work with and uh, they worked excellent with the turpenoid and I did end up trying it with a blender pencil and it, it worked fine but it was so, so much easier to do with the turpenoid. I just kept going with the turpenoid. Oh, so here we are with the Posca pencil going over the black lines on the ghost so they look more ghostly. The Posca worked the best and the medium Signo gel pen was second best. The fine Signo, not so much. And the jelly roll, no, don't, don't bother using that on the top of these particular pencils. Then I wanted to give the perimeter of the ghost a slightly, I don't know, maybe a little glowy effect. So I just used the white pencil from the set and I added sort of like a little white ring around the outside of the little spirits. And that worked nice too. So I added some details with the white to make it look like, oh, and I used the Posca pen too, I almost forgot, to make it look like the glass was reflecting on the outside of the lantern and the Posca pen worked nice over that area also. And, uh, so once again, definitely a thumbs up for these pencils. And um, don't forget, if you want to try to win the set, just follow me here, Facebook, give me a like, a share. And uh, if you do share, leave that info be below so I can enter you two times. So thank you for watching this video. This was pretty fun to make. Ooh, I, I made the ghost's eyes white. I was kind of going back and forth between the ghost's eyes white or black. I ended up going white. And I left the, the little mouse's eyes white, which was kind of creepy, but I'll leave it. What the heck? Up oh, there's the one side with no color. And there it is completed with the Norberg and Linden pencils that I absolutely like, that I would absolutely recommend. And I don't know how they do these things to make this wonderful 70, 72 set um, with amazing greens, only $25. So yes, 
I would definitely get this. The link will be below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you soon. Uh, in fact, stay tuned because I'm going to be giving away a surprise, a new surprise from Spira Farben. So thank you, Norberg and Linden. And thank you all for watching me. You're all lovely. And I hope you're all safe out there. And I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye.